Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. The nightmare of a rogue president. The nightmare of President Zero. With a lawless president, what did you expect to happen? With a lawless attorney general, a lawless Democrat party, a party that makes up laws and disregards others, what did you expect to happen? I kept hearing, why didn't the police act? All the wise guys in the media, all the liberals on Fox News and elsewhere, where are the police? Why didn't the Baltimore Police Act, they kept asking. How about this for an answer? Because they were told the FBI was monitoring the situation from the get-go. Now, what is the FBI? What use are they after all? When they sit and they sit and they sit, and all they do is hope to God a policeman makes a mistake. That's why they didn't act, because the cops don't want to go to jail. Now, Obama gave a speech today, finally, in the middle of a Rose Garden thing that looked like it was out of the Manchurian candidate until he finally said something about Baltimore with with Mr. Abe there from, from Japan, a very important meeting over nothing, another trade agreement to sell us down the river. Finally, he said something about Baltimore, and when he finally talked... He blamed everybody but himself. He blamed social ills for the Baltimore crisis. He said it's been going on for decades. Now, Obama was very fair in his comments. He blamed both rioters and police equally. But did anyone but Michael Savage notice this? He failed to take responsibility for all he has done to demonize the police over the long years of his regime. From the day he started, he's been attacking the police. Remember the incident at Harvard? Do you remember all the incidents in this community organizer's agitating career? He blamed everybody but himself. I have sound bites going back quite a while that I'm going to play at some point today to show you that the groundwork for the riots in Baltimore were uh, the, the groundwork was laid down a long time ago. As a matter of fact, it was last summer that I was so outraged by these speeches being given at colleges by Michelle Obama, Attorney General Eric Holder, and someone you've probably forgotten by now, Nancy Pelosi, encouraging the street rats to riot. In fact, Pelosi herself said that disruptors are supposed to be looked up to. By the way, where the Occupy groups go? Why, they're in the streets of Baltimore. If you look carefully at the black youth who were robbing sneakers and liquor and whatever, mixed in with them were the white communist agitators from around the East Coast. The white communist agitators with their knapsacks and their bicycles egging the crowd on. So Mr. Obama blamed social ills for the Baltimore crisis, huh? I'm surprised he didn't call them undocumented shoppers. That's the one thing that was missing. The president didn't disappoint me in many ways, but he did disappoint me by not calling the looters undocumented shoppers and saying that he'll grant them amnesty. But on that point, why have the ringleaders not been named or arrested? We know who they are. They boasted about it. We know who the ringleaders are. They're the Occupy movement. They're the Black Panthers. They're the ringleaders. Don't confuse yourself. This was not spontaneous. This looting and this arson, this lawlessness, as I said, the groundwork was laid by the president himself over the years of attacking the police. It was laid by the first lady at her speeches last summer. It was laid down uh, by Nancy Pelosi telling us that people of this nature are to be looked up to. But today, of course, is a new day, and people are trying to lay the blame. In the middle of all of this, he conducts a foreign policy situation uh, uh, on at the White House with uh, Japan for no reason whatsoever other than the cover-up. And why does Obama continue to blame the police and inequality for these events? Why? Because that's his stock and trade. That's what communists do. Ask yourself one question, idiots. 
Who stands to gain the most from the civil unrest? And who do you think is going to pay for rebuilding Baltimore? You are, you idiots. You morons are going to pay for it through federal money. You have no choice but to pay for the stolen goods and the burnt buildings. The animals went wild in the streets. They burnt down a senior center, for God's sakes. They burnt down a senior center. What were they after in the senior center? What, were they, what did they want? It wasn't even finished yet. They burnt the senior center down to the ground. They looted stores. It had nothing to do with the alleged mistreatment of an individual in a police van. We don't even know the truth of the story. All we hear is that his spine was severed. How do we have evidence that that's true? What, because the lawyer for the family said so? Since when are lawyers for rioters to be believed about anything? I haven't seen the evidence to show that anyone's neck was broken in a police van. No one even knows what happened there. But that's all irrelevant. What's relevant is that a city has been burned to the ground and the president blamed everybody but himself. But if you look back at the man's track record, you can see that he's instigated the riots across America by telling us we're responsible for them. He says, we as a country have to do some soul searching. If our society really wanted to solve the problem, he said the public would pay attention to issues such as early childhood education and criminal justice reform, not just when people riot. I've heard the same rubbish my entire life. I've heard the same crap my entire life. Never ever blaming the criminal, never ever blaming the rioter, always saying that we fail them, that our society failed them. My God, we didn't fail them. They should have all been shot, as far as I'm concerned, with rubber bullets. If we had a law and order mayor, if we had a law and order president, these riots could have been stopped right from the beginning. Rubber bullets, water cannons would have stopped these people. Not sitting there and letting them riot and burn. Why did that go on so long? Why did it take the genius mayor, who don't know what the heck she was talking about? Did you hear that speech Saturday? where she wink, wink, nod, nod, told him to go ahead and destroy things, and the next day when she was caught, said she didn't say it? Well, let's start with that. Let's go to that soundbite, which is the germ of it all, the local one, which is so-called mayor, Stephanie Rawlings Blake, competent only to run a woman's college, if that. Listen to clip 17 from Saturday. It's a very delicate balancing act. Because while we uh, tried to make sure that they were protected from the cars and the other you know, things that were going on, um, we also gave those who wished to destroy space to do that as well. And we uh, worked very hard okay. to... Those who wish to destroy space to do that as well. So in other words, you have a bunch of crazy children who you know are destructive, and you're a teacher. And you come in the classroom and you say, you know, we're going to let the crazy children destroy the classroom. Is that how you run a classroom? No, you take the crazy children out who are destructive and put them in a special school as they did in my, in my day. Oh, we had kids like this in my day. I'm a former teacher. We had special schools for people like this with special teachers for children like that. And they were sent to these 600 schools when they were troublemakers. Didn't matter what race they were. If they could not conform to the classroom, they were sent to what were known in New York City as 600 schools. And the teachers were generally very tough. They weren't afraid of them. They were not afraid of these kids. And if the kids continued to act up in the 600 schools, the next step was graduating to a reform school. And if they didn't behave in the reform school, they went to the hard time. And guess what? We had more law and more order in my day. But right now, we have a lawless society under a lawless president. He makes up laws. He changes laws. He ignores the laws that are on the books. He writes laws that he likes. So you have a lawless president acting out. Why shouldn't they act out in the streets, they figure? No one's going to stop them. They were empowered to riot. They were empowered to burn. They were empowered to loot. This didn't hap happen out of, uh, the, out of thin air. It didn't happen out of thin air. There was no one standing in their way. They knew that the cops couldn't hit him with the clubs over the head, which is what cops are there to do, which is to stop riots. In a sane society, if you got a bunch of maniacs wanting to burn a city down, you stop them. But the cops were deballed in advance by Obama, by Holder, and by the FBI, who warned them if they did their job, 
the cops themselves might go to jail. So don't blame the cops. There's a lot of blame to go around. And you know what? It starts at the top. It starts right at the top. There's a lot of questions and there's a lot of answers. And we're going to cover all of them today on the Savage Nation. Here's a few. Why has there been no comments from the Republican Party? Where are the presidential candidates on the Republican side speaking out about the Baltimore riots? They want to be the president of the United States, Ted, Ted Cruz, uh, Marco Rubio, the ice cream man. They want to be the president, Chris Christie. And they have nothing to say about a city burning to the ground. I guarantee you, if I, Michael Savage, had announced my candidacy for the presidency, I would have held a press conference. And I would have said, if I am president, here's what I would do. And I can guarantee you there's going to be no riots when I'm president, because here's what I will do. I will do this, this, and this. And there will be no riots if I'm president. And here's what I will do to restore law and order in this country. And that's the end of it. You haven't heard that from our false candidates, have you? I have a lot more to say, and I'm sure you do too. The phone number here is 855-407-282. It's the one-stop shop for venting on the riots in Baltimore on the Savage Nation. I'll be back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. The only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Since Ferguson and the task force that we put together, we have seen too many instances of what appears to be police officers uh, interacting with individuals, primarily African-American, often poor, yeah, right. uh, in They're ways that raise trouble Everyone's and Everyone's innocent, right. I'm and it sick comes of up, this bull crap. Shut up! Just shut up with your double talk. Since you came to office, we've had nothing but trouble. You know, this goes back quite a way. <clears throat> and I'm going to go back quite a way with you. He blamed everybody but himself. And I'm going to go back to a very important book called Stop the Coming Civil War. I know I should be talking about my new novel, but I'm not. I'm going to talk about the coming civil war. This was like the first shot at Fort, Fort Sumter, or you could say that Ferguson was like the first shot at Fort Sumter. We have a civil war going on. We have a civil war started by these community organizers, Obama, Holder, Jarrett, you name them. It's been a slow-growing civil war against the middle class. And I was so outraged last year by the speeches that they were giving at colleges promoting this very kind of violence in a very subtle way that I wrote the book called Stop the Coming Civil War. And here's what I asked. My question is this, I wrote. Will the Obama inner circle of extremist left-wing radicals trigger an event that will provoke an American insurrection, even a civil war? I wrote this. I said the desperate Democrats are all pursuing policies of race and class warfare. As their failures and many deceits become clearer to the people, as the war they're fighting against the freedoms promised in the U.S. Constitution materializes, they are counting on minority voters to turn out for them at the ballot box. Look at these excerpts from some of the speeches to high school and college graduates, I wrote. And then I quoted Michelle Obama. I want you to listen to a speech she gave at a high school or college graduation. Listen to Michelle Obama. We know that today in America, too many folks are still stopped on the street because of the color of their skin. Or they're made to feel unwelcome because of where they come from, or they're bullied because of who they love. Because the fact is I wanted to know to that stop you right there. So I wrote this. I said, here's Michelle Obama, the first lady. Is she trying to agitate these children, stir them up to do what? And I ask this, how do you feel about the First Lady stirring up such racial enmity in this speech? 
How would you feel if I told you that I believe it's not an isolated incident? And then I played, I wrote rather, about Attorney General Eric Holder, one of the most despicable public servants in the history of this country, a pure villain. He gave a graduation speech, and I quoted it on page three to document it, of Stop the Coming Civil War. Let's play Eric Holder and you'll see what he had to do with the riots in Baltimore. And segregation has reoccurred. Zero tolerance school discipline practices affect black males at a rate three times higher than their white peers. Now the implication is what? Zero tolerance policies affect black males at a rate of three times higher than that of their white peers. You would think by that statement that the black males are being picked on, not that they're causing a ruckus in the school and they need to be thrown out of the classroom when they do so. So again, what is he doing there? Laying the groundwork for Ferguson, laying the groundwork for Baltimore, and God knows what's coming tomorrow. But they're not alone. In Stop the Coming Civil War, right in the first pages, Nancy Pelosi gave a speech in my alma mater, shame on them, that despicable Harridan gave a speech telling the students to be disruptors in clip five. Listen to this. Our founders were successful disruptors of the then status quo. Being called a disruptor, in my view, is a very high compliment. You here in Berkeley are already disruptors in many ways. In 1964, Mario oh, Savio... Do you understand what I'm saying to you? I am a social observer and a social commentator. I am paid to observe and comment. I was so outraged by Michelle Obama, Barack Obama, Eric Holder, Nancy Pelosi that I wrote the book Stop the Coming Civil War. They were laying the groundwork for Ferguson, Baltimore, and get on the train. If you think it's going to end in Baltimore, you're mistaken. If you think that these left-wing fanatics are finished burning our cities to the ground, you are mistaken. There's a train ride coming, my friends, but you better be wearing an inflammable suit. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. This is the federal government is, is that we don't run these police forces. Mm, I can't federalize yet. every sure police force in the country got a pen and, and a force them to retrain. Sure but you what can. I can do is to start working with them. Yeah, have Al Sharpton retrain them. Uh, so that they have can the Crips and the Bloods begin this process the of change. Uh, have ISIS retrain the and police? We, coming out of the task force that we put together, we're now working with local communities. Where is the useless Department of Homeland Security that missed the Boston Marathon bomber? Where is the useless Department of Homeland Security? Where is the useless Department of Homeland Security? Where is the useless Department of Homeland Security? Where is the useless FBI, which was sent there to monitor the police, rendering them impotent to protect property and protect lives the fbi was sent there specifically by obama and holder to make certain that the police didn't lift a stick and crack a few heads that's what they were that was sent there for the fbi was sent there to control the police not to control the crips and the bloods and the gangbangers as well the other gangbangers and the looters and the rioters and the burners that's what the fbi should have been doing then you got the news media you got Martha Washington there on, it, on, on Fox last night. I couldn't believe what I was watching. I would rank her as the lowest of the low, by the way. Whatever her name is. Blondie, you think she's Miss Perfect. I call her Martha Washington for a reason. I don't remember her name. Megan. Megan Kelly, the new star. Martha Washington sitting there in the safety of her studio, sending some kid out in the street, and she's saying to him, Oh, go over there. Go talk to that one. Uh, uh, go over there. Go talk to that one. From her studio, wait. Martha Washington. Then she starts attacking the police. You didn't hear any of this. I did. I watched this for four straight hours last night. I couldn't believe what I was watching. All hogging the cameras. All of the street animals hogging the cameras. All of a sudden, they were movie stars. Hoping for a slot on Fox News or MSNBC as a special commentator. Or better yet, maybe they figured they'd get a new reality show called The Real Rioters of Baltimore. Maybe uh, Roger Ailes can come up with a new show for Fox. The real rioters of Baltimore, you know, it could lead to a franchise. He ought to call Rupert up and say that he's got a new idea. 
that Martha Washington was onto something. She picked out the lowest of the low for the guy in the street to go up to with a, with a microphone and ask him what, what his grievances were. You hear this? What are your grievances, Mr. Rioter? What's your problem? And they had to listen to this drivel of what the problem was. All trying out for a new Fox show. The real rioters of Baltimore. And she could introduce it, Martha Washington. She could sit there and cross her legs and put on lipstick and, lipstick and introduce the rioters. So there's a lot of blame to go around. A lot of it to go around. Of course, uh, it's all about the police, isn't it? All I kept hearing on Fox News for two hours straight, why didn't the Baltimore police do anything? Where were the Baltimore police? Excuse me, madam. A, a moron. It looks like an idiot with a 40 IQ. A welfare recipient. Excuse me, how do you feel about the police not acting uh, here in the streets to protect you? What do you expect her to say? The very police that she spit on two minutes before, now suddenly she's saying the police should have protected her. What do you want it? Which way do you want it? Which way do you want it? And what about all the white agitators there with their little knapsacks, all the college girls running around like little uh, rodents in, in and out of the crowds? Where, where they come from? Who are these white agitators? Why, they're the Occupy movement. Why, they're Nancy Pelosi's uh, ruckus organization. Yeah, that's who they are. They didn't go away. The Occupy movement was, was in there like bull weevils stirring up the mobs to burn, baby, burn. And so, if you care to comment on it, I guess you can. And I know many of you are boiling inside. You're boiling because what you want is stability in your country. You're boiling because you want law and order and you have lawlessness and disorder. Obama has granted this nation lawlessness and disorder. And it's only going to get worse. It's not going to get better because that's the way a community organizer maintains his power. It's by scaring people, by rattling people. And by the way, where's Hillary Clinton? Do you remember three days ago she was enmeshed in one of the greatest scandals of our life? Do you remember what happened to her and Bill Clinton? That suddenly they were enmeshed in the uranium scandal. You forgot about that? Transferring our uranium ore to Russia in secret deals with kickbacks. Oh, it's all alleged. There's no proof, of course. We've all watched The Godfather. We know that you can't ever nail The Godfather because he's got buffers. You expect to prove the Godfather actually ordered something happening in the street? Are you crazy? Because he has buffers. Buffers. Plenty of buffers. Plenty of buffers. The luckiest couple on earth. Shrewd, crafty, evil as evil is. Greedy like greedy is. And they got away scot-free because of the first the earthquake in Nepal which, as I said yesterday, I mean, the first thought I had was is that Bill Clinton called the president of Nepal and ordered him to uh, cause an earthquake, uh, and then he would have invited him on the board of the Clinton Foundation, but I said, that's preposterous. He couldn't have done that. But speaking of Bill Clinton, where is he? He left for Africa today. Oh, yeah. The book's coming out next week that accuses him of this and that and that and this. Again, you don't expect the book to have any proof, do you? You ever, never nail a godfather. Meanwhile, the godfather's in Africa to help the poor with AIDS, HIV, malaria, poverty, hunger. You get the game. You know how it works, don't you? The old game of the missionaries who came to Hawaii to save the natives from their heathen ways. And their descendants now, their lazy descendants in Hawaii, their lazy good-for-nothing descendants own most of the land uh, on Oahu, which should be taken away from them and given to the Hawaiians, by the way. What do you mean they inherited the land? They stole it from the Hawaiians. They gave him the bugaboo about Jesus and the cross. The next thing you knew, the Hawaiians were giving them land grants. Two generations later, the drug addicts are sitting there living off the land grants, the inheritors. Don't call me a communist. They stole it from the Hawaiians. They were going to be forced to give it back and let the descendants of the missionaries in Hawaii go to work and make a living. So don't think it's a one-way street with me. I see the whole picture. I see it all at once. But one thing I've learned in my life is that when there's no resistance, a bully will keep pushing. And these mobs are filled with street bullies. They're street thugs and street bullies. And the only thing between them and you, in your city, wherever you may be, in your white suburb, are the police. You think if you're sitting in your white suburb, you can be a good liberal, don't you? But what are you going to do if mobs, a, a mob of 50 of them come through your little white neighborhood? What are you going to do, get out your lawnmower? Turn your, 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 deer, your John Deere on? 
try to run them down? You're going to get out of baseball. I love all the guys say, I don't believe in guns. I have a bat in my house. Don't you love that one, Robert? Oh, no, I don't believe in guns. I have a bat in my house. Yo, go out to the mob with a bat and see what that does for you. Ask the Koreans from Los Angeles what a bat would have done for them. They knew a long time ago they needed shotguns and AR-15s, not bats. My friends, this is the beginning of something new, and it's gotten bigger than Ferguson, hasn't it? Let's look at it mathematically. Was the Baltimore, and Baltimore's not over, by the way. There's another night coming, and they're just getting ready today. They're getting the drugs. They're getting geared up. They're getting gassed up. If you think it's over, you're mistaken. But isn't uh, Baltimore a lot bigger than Ferguson? Well, what might be next? Which city is next to be targeted by the mobs with the impotent police standing by? They're not allowed to do anything. Police are not allowed to do anything, are they? No, indeed. All right, my friends, it is now 40 minutes after the hour, 42 minutes after the hour. I have vented, but you haven't. I've given you some of my ideas, certainly not all of them. I'm a law and order American. I want a law and order president. Tell me which Republican candidate represents law and order. Which one of them? Not one of them has said a word, not a peep. Not one of them. Where, where's, the, where's the opposition party? You would think at a time of civil disorder in America, a time of civil discord in America, at a time of riots and fires and a city burning, one Republican would say one word, but they are just as controlled by their advisors as the Democrats. They've said nothing, zero, nothing. Let's go to some of the callers. WMAL, line two, fire away. What's on your mind? Uh, there is no America first out of this administration. And, and quite frankly, Baltimore and Ferguson, it makes sense. Because the fact that a mayor of a major city would tell the people that we're going to allow them to destroy their own city and police are given, are given a stand-down order, in my bones, it comes from the White House. And this goes back to exactly what Obama said five or six years ago about creating a national security force. Ferguson and Baltimore are examples of what he is trying to do to this country. Well, we have that soundbite of a national security force, the SS that reports directly to him, the, uh, the SS Obama brigades. We've seen them uh, in the streets of Baltimore and Ferguson without guns and uniforms, but he could easily deputize them, couldn't he? No, wouldn't that, give the, wouldn't that give the youth jobs if he deputized them and made them into the police? No, I don't think you're not using your head. Here's how you solve the problem if you're Obama. You let a few cities burn, and then you say in order to prevent it from happening, we're going to create a civilian national security force just as well-funded as the police, only they'll be better controlled because they'll answer only to me and Al Sharpton, and... Um, we're going to get them from the youth of these cities because they know the streets better than anybody. We're going to give them uniforms and guns, and they will patrol the cities. Now, there's a story just came out on Fox News that's pretty amazing. Social media smoking gun account tracking suggests Baltimore and Ferguson targeted by protest pros. I told you that. I told you that. Unearthed striking connections to last summer's violence in Ferguson, Missouri suggesting the presence of professional protesters of, or anarchists in both cases. Didn't I tell you that? Didn't I tell you that 10 minutes ago? Didn't I tell you where did, where did the uh, Occupy movement go? Didn't I tell you where, you could trace the line straight up to Nancy Pelosi's speech, Michelle Obama's speech, Eric Holder's speech, Barack Obama's speeches? They've been laying the groundwork for these protests for a very long time. I think in the case of Baltimore, it got out of hand, by the way. They didn't think it would get this bad. That's right, my friends. It's not coming out of the thin air. It's not just disenfranchised youths. No, they have been encouraged to do this. And we're supposed to now be hanging on uh, pins and needles, sitting on pins and needles, waiting for the Supreme Court of arguing over gay marriage. You hear of an insane society like this? A society that's burning a society that's being overrun by illegal aliens, a society being penetrated by the worst vermin since Adolf Hitler, ISIS, and we're going to sit here and worry about gay marriage. A group of self-centered egomaniacs outside chanting about gay marriage. That doesn't interest me whatsoever. Not one iota. Not one iota. 
855-400-7282. WBAP in Dallas, welcome to the program. What's on your mind tonight? Hi, Dr. Savage. This is Brandon from uh, Dallas. Uh, I wanted to just talk about uh, what's going on here in Baltimore. Uh, What if this was to happen in a city where guns are more prevalent? And if one of these business owners was to, let's say, have themselves protected, um, what kind of dynamics do you feel that that's going to add into this discussion, and where is this heading? Do you think that the police have a right to be preparing for martial law, and, and is that going to, is it, do you think that it's going to boil over into that, into that level? Because if you know, somebody starts defending themselves, rightfully so, um, then we have shooting in the streets. And where is this going? Thank you, sir. I'll take my answer up here. Well, your question is loaded with the answer. It's such a kind of question that has an answer inherently built into it. And I think it's self, uh, self-evident that what you said answers the question. I'm not trying to evade it. I'm not a politician because you're talking about a suppositional case. I don't know what will happen. I don't know what will happen if someone tries to burn down a house and then someone and shoots the rioter. I would suppose that the, the rioter would be dead and the rioters, the rest of them will go to the next house and try to burn that one down. You remember the Rodney King riots, what happened? The only buildings that were not torched were those defended by people with guns. They went to a soft targets that were not defended. Or people defending it with, uh, with baseball bats. They burnt those down. Remember the Koreans on the roofs with their guns? The famous story of the Koreans defending themselves? The rioters are a bunch of cowards. They're thugs. They're punks. They ran to the next building that was not protected. So the question is different, though. You ask what would happen if someone did shoot a rioter. I don't have an answer for you. It depends upon the city in which it occurs. It depends upon the state in which it occurs. It depends upon the laws of the land. And there are very strict laws on the discharge of firearms, even when you're being attacked. And you have to study your own law on that one. I can't give you a blanket answer, to be very honest with you. I know in the state of California, we're living in a prison camp. I know that in the state of California, we have no government. I know in the state of California, we have a one-party Soviet system. I know in the state of California, there are virtually no property rights. I know in the state of California, I would be very reluctant to use a gun to defend myself. It's different in Texas. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-Y-C-O-I-N. We can't just leave this to the police. I think there are police departments that have to do some soul searching. I think there's some communities that have to do some soul searching. Uh, But I think we as a country have to do some soul searching. This is not new. It's been going on for decades. Everyone has to do soul searching except the commander in chief. He had nothing to do with this. No, attacking the police from the day he became president, nothing to do with this basically giving the rioters the idea that they'll never be punished because they have grievances. Don't you understand what this is all about? Don't you get it yet? You can't put two and two together. And as I said to you before the break, the violence in Baltimore and Ferguson has been analyzed and it's been connected by social media. New data has come out linking them to uh, professional agitators. It was exclusive given to Fox News by an anonymous firm which does government work and they found between 20 and 50 social media accounts in Baltimore tied to the peak period of violence in Ferguson. So the professional protesters that we know work for the Obama machine and the professional anarchists that we know are connected to the Obama machine took advantage of Freddie Gray's death to incite the violence we just witnessed. None of this occurred in a vacuum. The soul-searching should begin in the White House. I'm Michael Savage. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised.
And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. What I'd say is, uh, this has been a slow rolling crisis. This has been going on for a long time. This has been? This is not new, and we shouldn't pretend that it's new. The good news is, is that perhaps there's some newfound awareness because of social media and video cameras and so forth that uh, there are, are problems and challenges when it comes to how policing and our laws are applied in certain communities and yeah, right. we have yeah, to pay attention to it. I'm sick and tired of hearing about this oppressed minority garbage. I'm sick of it. We're all oppressed in this society with this gangster in the White House and these criminals on Wall Street and these criminal Clintons evading responsibility for selling the country down the river. You know, a number of months ago, I talked about how when I was a boy, I was instructed by my parents to always be cooperative when encountering police. If I was stopped for missing a red light or a broken taillight or whatever it was, a broken muffler, I was told to always cooperate with the police. Now, compare that with these pictures that you're seeing in Baltimore. Wildings raised by no parents, by and large, except the one woman who slapped her son upside the head. The only one who dared do anything. No fathers around. No fathers. Wildings. Wildings, not responsive to anybody. They go to church. Are you kidding me? They go to school. Are you joking? The teachers are afraid for their lives in those schools. So I got an email, a, a letter from a gentleman, C.J. Bud Marcos. I just got in my hands. I swear to God, it was sent on April 15th. I only got it just now. It was sent to my publisher, St. Martin's Press. And he said he made up a bunch of cards because he said... uh on your April 13th show, you recounted how, as a boy, you were instructed by your parents to always be cooperative with encountering police. And he put out some cards for people to carry. And a little card says, this card can save your life if stopped by police and you're on foot. One, do not resist. Two, keep hands in plain sight. Three, avoid quick movements. Four, identify actions in advance, such as officer, I'm going to get my ID and my wallet. Uh, five, obey lawful commands, even if uncomfortable or embarrassing, such as do not move, sit on the curb. Six, never joke about guns. Seven, do not argue. Do not make any uh, uh, abrupt comments. Talk in a calm, level manner. And he said, very important, this event will uh, pass. Let it do so without tragedy. Procedures exist to correct any wrong wrongs. That's exactly what I was taught. I was taught by very intelligent immigrant parents and their friends that the cop is always right comply with their commands, and you could always straighten it out in a court by getting a lawyer. And now we have a lawless president who writes his own laws and ignores the laws that he doesn't like. I'll give you an example. How about immigration laws? We have laws on the books. The man is a lawless president. He's a criminal in that regard. He's an anarchist in that regard. He is a lawless president. He's a disorderly president. So what do you expect the kids in the street to do? You know what I'm saying? With a lawless president, what did you expect to happen? With a lawless attorney general, a lawless Democrat party, a party that makes up laws and disregards others, what did you expect to happen? All I kept hearing was, where was the Baltimore police? Why didn't they do anything? There was Martha Washington on Fox News sitting on a perch there, Blondie, telling the kid in the street that she had, the Billy Batson reporter, oh, go over to that one. I heard it right on the air. Go to that one. Go to that one with the red shirt over there. He looks violent. Basically, he looks like, a, hey, go to that one over there. He looks like the wildest one. Yeah, turn left. And they went up to them and they kept saying, well, where? How did you feel about the Baltimore police not stopping the riots? They're asking the rioters. You hear this? Well, the answer is quite simple. The FBI was sent there to make sure the police didn't do anything. The FBI was sent there as a sort of, uh, of Obama's police force to make sure that the local police couldn't do their jobs. That's what they did there. That's all. That's your answer. There's plenty of blame to go around. But it starts at the top. Obama and Holder started attacking the police from the get-go. The police are now intimidated across America. What did you expect to happen? And whoa, we were kept asking last night, watching this. Everyone I knew watching and saying, where's Obama? Where's Obama? Everyone kept saying, where's the president? Where's the president? Why doesn't he say anything? What is he doing? Golfing? Watching a movie? Where is the guy? A city is burning. It's getting worse. 
In a normal time, in a normal country, a president would give a conference immediately. And he'd get up and he would say in clear terms, I will not tolerate lawlessness. Rioters will be arrested on the site. I'm authorizing the police to arrest any rioters. And the full extent of the law will be thrown at you. I'm warning you, go home, get off the streets. That's what you expect from a leader. Where was he? Invisible. So if you're not stopping the riots, what are you doing? You're enabling the riots. Finally today, I watched the, uh, the strangest event of, of, of my uh, current uh, political life under this weird administration. He has a staged press conference uh, on the White House lawn with the prime minister or president of Japan, Abi. And on and on they go about Japan-U.S. relations. Meanwhile, the city was burning last night. And all we kept asking is, when is he going to say a word about it? And they take one international question after another. Finally gets around to talking about it, and right on target, he attacks the police. And to make sure you don't see what he's really doing, he throws in a few attacks on the rioters and calls them thugs and criminals and this and that. But the basic statement he made was attacking the police and social inequities in America. In other words, he went back to ground on his basic form, formula. And he tells everyone has to do soul searching, but not him. No one has to do any soul searching in his office. Nobody. He had nothing to do with any of this. Well, my friends, I see the whole picture from another point of view. Many of us fear he wants to eliminate local police forces and that he wants to nationalize the police or federalize them where we have the equivalent of the Mexican police, the federales. Wouldn't that be just great? Wouldn't that be just great if we had federales in America and there were no local police departments? Isn't that just what America needs? Answering to Al Sharpton? Can you imagine the world we're living in? I told you that, I told you the story a number of times over the years on the radio that I've studied the, the communist revolutions ever since I'm 18 years old. And I know what happens in communist revolutions. And I used an example of Mao's China. And in Mao's China, after the uh, revolution, after the so-called cultural revolution, get the picture, cultural revolution, when the middle class was purged in China, the bourgeoisie was purged, uh, and the red brigades were unleashed on the people, he took 14 and 15-year-old peasants who had no education and made them into teachers and doctors. And there's a very famous story of him taking a laundress, I'm talking about Mao Zedong, not Barack Obama yet, taking a laundress from the bowels of a hospital in China and saying to her, you're going to be a doctor now. And he took the doctors and put them in the laundry to punish them because they were the bourgeoisie. And she said, the little child from the country, I don't know how to be a doctor. And he said, don't be a counter-revolutionary or you'll be forced to join the doctors. That's what happens in a revolution. She said, well, it hasn't happened here. What are you going on, about, go, going on and on about this? Well, because I am Linkaeus, the pilot seer of the Argonauts. I see things before others do. And I've seen them before others do. And I wrote Stop the Coming Civil War. And you are living through a civil war. A slow burning civil war started by these left-wing agitators from the day they seized power. And they have a long time to go yet. A long time to go yet. Remember who it was on radio who warned you what George Bush would do in his last six months. It was me, Michael Savage. You don't remember it, but I remember it because I did it. It was in the September, it was in the, uh, the August, rather, of the last few months of Bush's regime. Do you remember what I said? That he had boosted the... Uh, he built up the deficit greater than the five, four previous administrations. You don't remember that. Bush was a profligate, crazed spender. He was printing money like mad. And I warned you, I said, I called George Bush at that time a, a, a fiscal socialist, a phrase not yet stolen by anybody. But Bush was a fiscal socialist. And then I said to you, I remember it was August to September of the last months of his regime, and I said, he's not through yet. Watch what he does in the last three months. It's going to escalate. And sure enough, they crashed the economy. They busted the economy out. They made trillions of dollars on mortgages, 
People made trillions of dollars. You don't understand. People went bankrupt, but others made billions and trillions of dollars on that mortgage bust out because they sold the mortgages, the companies that all held the mortgages, they sold them short. You don't know that. I can name names. You want to name some names of people who made billions of dollars on that mortgage debacle while you lost your shirt? It was all planned by the Republican Party. She said, wait a minute. You mean they're both doing the same thing? Yeah, sort of. That's how it works. See, it's two gangs. We know about the Crips and the Bloods in the street, but you don't know that the Democrats and Republicans are fundamentally gangs with suits and ties. And the game is, is that first, the Crips gang runs America for eight years. They're called Republicans. And then they bust out the economy. They sack it, take everything they can, sack out everything they can from the country. And then they give it to the Bloods, the Democrats, for eight years to do the same. And then they say to you, oh, man, that last party was awful. But if we elect the next party, why they're going to save us? Why there's the Republicans? They're the good guys. They have the white hats. They're going to save us. Yep, that's how the game is played. Yeah, that's just how the game is played. So we have an endemic problem in the country. Now a city burned to the ground. I was actually stunned watching it last night. At first, I thought it was a local conflagration in one corner of the city. And it kept getting worse and worse and worse. And there was no president. There were no police, a moron mayor who gave them license, and it got worse and worse and worse. And there was nothing happening. There were no rubber bullets fired. There were no police hoses. There were no horses. Why not? Why did they bring out the horses and the police, uh, uh, the, the hoses? Why didn't they fire water at these rioters? That's a nonviolent way to stop them. And then when it gets worse and worse and they're being taunted, you fire rubber bullets. That's how you control a crowd. Why didn't they use any of that? And where was the useless Department of Homeland Security with their trillions of dollars of equipment? Isn't that what we pay them for? Where are they with their armored personnel carriers and their rubber, their rubber cars? Why didn't they do anything? Where's the moron who runs the Department of Homeland Security today? Jad Johnson. Where'd that guy come from? Who is he? Why, well, he's getting ready to control you in the suburbs if you do something? Why didn't he control the mobs in the streets of Baltimore? Where was he? Where were they? Where was DHS last night? You didn't ask that question? A trillion-dollar organization that's useless did nothing. Where were they? The phone number, as you know, is 855-407-282. This is a radio talk show called The Savage Nation, and it means talk. And I feel, I, I feel that you need to vent. And the minute I come back, I'll take some calls right here on The Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. There's no excuse for the kind of violence that we saw yesterday. It is counterproductive. Uh, when individuals get crowbars and start prying open doors to loot, uh, they're not protesting. They're not making a statement. They're stealing. When they burn down a building, they're committing arson. And they're destroying and undermining uh, businesses and opportunities in their own communities that rob uh, jobs and opportunity from uh, people in that area. All right, so that was his uh, sop to the police. After attacking the police and the society in general, he then attacked the rioters. Uh, he should have given that part of the speech first, and it should have been done last night. But nevertheless, better late than never. Okay, terrific. And as promised before, the media has failed to identify the leader of the Baltimore riots. They have names. We know who they are. World Net Daily did a study of them. They're the ex-New Black Panther chairman, a notorious racist who was egging the crowd on. Social media was involved. This did not occur spontaneously. WMAL in Washington, D.C. Line number eight. Go ahead, please. You're on the Savage Nation. Uh, yeah, this is Perry. You know, it kind of boggles the mind how people whose feet are not on the ground um, really miss the mark when it comes to what goes on in the community. Yes, you might have agitators. Yes, you might have this, you might have that. 
yes, the administration of uh, or other political entities might use this or say are using this for their own political um, grandizement. However, there's a reality that's going on there. I've been working with our community for over 20 years, man, and it's not a game there. And our people have. No, I don't have to live there to see animals burning a street down, do I? That's number one. These oh, no, no. You you listen to me. You had your, your statement. I'll make mine. Do I have to be in Baltimore to see wild animals burning buildings down? I didn't see any wild animals burning buildings down. I saw. Well, well who did you see burning the buildings down? They're not animals. They're human beings, sir. No, they're not human beings. Once they revert to that level of lawlessness, they have lost their right to be called human beings. Okay, that's that's what you say. So you're justifying their burning and looting, then? No, I'm not justifying the. Well, of course you are. You can't have it both ways. You're playing the Al Sharpton game. You're saying, well, oh, we understand where they're coming from, but we don't justify burning and looting. You just said that. You said they're not animals. What are they? They're protesting legitimately by burning a, a senior citizen sent it to the ground? Did I say that they were justified in burning a senior No, but you said they're not animals. That's what you said. I say they're not animals, but when you have and, and see... What would you call people, then, who burn a building to the ground and loot a building and break it and get sneakers? What would you call them? Upstanding protesters? No, misguided folks. Misguided folks. Oh, yeah. Misgu you mean, then you must be a misguided uh, community organizer like the president. You're not, let you're not letting me talk, man. And you gotta well, you are talking, but it, the difference is I'm answering you. You're not used to that. You're used to scaring everybody. You're used to scaring everybody into feeling that they'll be called a racist if they answer you. No, I'm not saying you are at all. I, I'm saying, look, I got to tell you something, my friend, that you may not know. I taught in all black schools. And I learned a few good lessons from those schools. And I learned that the majority of kids wanted to learn. But the animals who didn't want to learn had to be controlled. And guess who controlled them? The students controlled them. Because they knew who the wild ones were. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. If we are serious about solving this problem, then we're going to not only have to help the police, we're going to have to think about what can we do, the rest of us, to make sure that we're providing early education to these kids, to make sure that we're reforming our criminal justice system so again. it's not just a pipeline from schools right. to prisons. Right, 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 right. So that we're not rendering yeah, right. uh, men in these communities unemployable right, because right, right, right. of a felony record for a nonviolent drug offense that we're making investments so that they can get the training yeah, they need yeah. to find Never jobs. Invest. That's hard. You know what's even harder is stop BSing the public. Why don't you try that for a change? Why don't you lay the blame where it belongs, Mr. President? Why don't you lay the blame where it belongs? Stop t blaming everybody else for the problems. Nobody wanted to see the city burn. And I want to go back to something that I try to get out with the interchange with that last caller, who I thought was very intelligent except when he started to say that the the rioters, who I called animals, were just misguided, uh, I don't know what he called, misguided something. That's like saying, oh, well, the ISIS uh, Muslims who are cutting the throats of Christians, they're not animals. They're not subhumans, those ISIS members. They're misguided. They're misguided Muslims. Uh, you see, when you behave a certain way, you step out of the uh, human family. And that kind of violence, to me, is not that of a human being. But let's put that aside because that's a rhetorical question. I taught when I was very young in all black schools in New York City. I don't want a, a halo for it or a golden award, but I learned a few things. I was very young and I looked very young. In fact, that's when I first grew a beard. I was so young looking. <laughs> I graduated young from college and I taught in, in South Jamaica in an all black school. And it was junior high school that I was teaching at the time. I found it to be very interesting. I wasn't intimidated by it because I grew up in a multiracial city. I didn't have, I really didn't have an issue with it. Okay, whatever. Take it whichever way you want it. I wasn't uncomfortable, in other words, being around another race. Let's put it to you that way. So I go in the classroom and I was teaching them science and I'd start to, I, I started by telling them, here's what I was going to do because I knew it was an unruly school. I knew it. some teachers had broken. They couldn't take it. They couldn't take it. They ran out. 
I, I was a young kid, but I, I kind of knew what I was doing. And I said to the class, here's what I'm going to do. I'm here to teach you science. And it's up to you whether you want to learn. And I'm going to start to teach, go to the blackboard, whatever. And if you start to misbehave, make noise, throw things, I'm going to sit down and read the newspaper until you stop. And it went on like that for a while. I'd start to teach and they would start acting out. I'd sit down and read the paper. And every time I sat down to read the paper, listen to what I'm going to say to you. The girls in the classroom, who were as tough as the boys, by the way, would get up and yell at them. And they'd say, you sit down. Mr. Mr. Savage wants to teach us, you sit down. And if the boys didn't, they'd crack them in the face. I swear to God. You saw the famous picture of the mother beating up her son, giving the kid an upside the head? The, the girls were like that. They were, they were strong as I in some of these women. They were like 15, 14 years old. Man, they could pack a punch. And guess what? I had a very successful career as a young teacher. And then we, sometimes I would go and watch another guy who would try to control them. And the more you try to control them, the worse it would get sometimes, you know. So it's a, there's a little psychology involved as well. It's not an easy situation. On the one hand, when you got rioters burning and looting, you got to use maximum, uh, well, not maximum would be machine guns. I don't mean that. You got to start using the fire hoses. You got to start using the batons. You got to start using the water hoses. You got to stop them. You got to move the crowd back because it'll get worse as it did. And by the way, it's not over yet. You see already they're getting ready for tonight. What do you think? They're finished? They're having the time of their lives. They don't have any, they don't have any jobs. What is their job? I'm working today. You're probably working today. What are they doing? Where, 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 where are these mobs coming from? Who are they? Who are the white kids there with the knapsacks with the beards running around, egging the cops on and egging the rock? Who are they? Why are they not immediately arrested as outside agitators? And by the way, I'll repeat this for you because I said it during the Ferguson riots. There is an anti-riot act on the books, a federal anti-riot act. If you cross state lines to provoke a riot, you are violating federal law. And I cited the law. These laws were written a long time ago. And I don't mean in the 1800s. They were written to prevent Ferguson. They were written to prevent uh, this kind of event here in, uh, in, uh, in Baltimore. And what they do is, if you have a legitimate federal government, which we do not have, they seek out the out-of-state agitators and they arrest them. They detain them for crossing state lines to provoke a riot. Period. End of story. It's not genius. Don't be a genius to know what's going on. You think the people of Baltimore want to see the city burnt to the ground? That young man who called the show to discuss it or argue with me, he didn't want to see the city burn. He's on the right side of things. He knows who's behind this. He knows there are outside agitators, white communists and white Occupy movement and white anarchist bums. You look at the pictures, take a look carefully, you'll see mixed in with the whole month, with the bicycles and the knapsacks. What are they doing there? What are they, oppressed minorities? They probably come from white middle class or upper class, you know, money families. They got nothing better to do with their time but cause a riot somewhere and think that they're going to bring about a better society. I've seen it all. I've seen this before. There's nothing new under the sun. And that's my position. It's that simple. Now, if you haven't talked yet, you can still try to get on the show. Let's go to some of these callers. WGDJ Radio on line five. Line five, you're up. What's on your mind? Go ahead, please. Dr. Savage, my name is Randy. I I've been listening to you for 15 years, and I just want to thank you for turning me from a political neophyte into someone who cares and someone who has a p position. And Good. And let me tell you something. Don't think you're not having an effect, because even if you mention it to one person, you're having an effect. You've also taught me the importance of history. And I, I could never believe that something from 2,000 years ago would matter today, but it does. And I, Are you talking about my quote about um, uh, Cicero, about the enemy within? Yes. Yes, yeah. I am. Yeah, that was the that was the um, the dedication to one of my earlier books about the enemy within, and it's not it's worthy of repeating, but not this moment. I am I want to thank you, number one, for being a 15 year listener. I'm going to reward you by giving you a free copy of the new hardcover novel Countdown to Mecca. Under the threat of a third world war, nothing matters except the mission. Don't ever take your eye off the big riot. We know that Baltimore is bad. Do you know what's going to happen if one of these Sleeper cells sets off something even bigger in one of our cities. 
Can you see what's going to happen when the police have now been deballed by this president and by the attorney general? Can you just imagine who is watching this with great interest around the world? You think that the radical Islamists are not watching this when they see a police force that's not allowed to react to a riot where buildings are being burned? What do you think they're thinking? Tell me what you think they're thinking. You can pretty much figure that out, right? WMAL in Washington, line number six. Go ahead. You're on the radio with Michael Savage and millions of others. What's on your mind? Hi, my name is Sue, and I work for a state delegate in the Maryland House of Legislature. And I just wanted to make a couple of quick statements about Baltimore and Maryland. This has been a lawless city for quite some time. This is not just happening overnight. That mayor was actually put in office because her predecessor was convicted of embezzling state funds. She is a lawless mayor. She openly told the police department two years ago not to follow federal law concerning illegal aliens. She has openly said that she wants to have 10,000, quote, immigrant families move into Baltimore. She doesn't follow Maryland law. And with this kind of lawlessness and handcuffing the police the way she has, it's not a surprise. But the real, the real shocker was this morning, Michael, when the president of the Baltimore City Council had a press conference with known gang members standing side by side with him, and he apologized to the rioters for being called thugs, and he said that they are really just misdirected youths. Well, isn't that what the caller just said to me? That he used the same code words, misdirected? Yeah, he was saying that they're misdirected young people, but this is the president of the Baltimore City Council. All right, so it's corrupt. What's new about that? I mean, Baltimore's been a corrupt city going back 100 years. Well, what we've got, well, if, you, if you listen to them last night, they were saying, well, this is an angry city. They don't have the right school system. The taxpayers of Maryland last year gave them a billion dollars for their schools in Baltimore City. Oh, yeah, and where'd the money go? Up whose noses? Exactly, and and the corruption in that city, and if you call them out... Well, the corruption in Baltimore is bad, but you, you don't live in San Francisco. You don't know how bad corruption is until you've lived here. This is a one-party system here. You have a Republican governor. We have a one-party system in the state of California. They are raping the treasuries from the state house to the city house. This is the most corrupt state in the whole country and the most corrupt city in the country, but people don't even know it because they never hear about San Francisco because there's no newspaper here. Well, Nancy Pelosi is from Baltimore, as you know, and we just recently got our Republican governor and this this uh, Stephanie Rawlings Blake, the mayor of Baltimore, refused to answer the governor's calls all day yesterday. Where, was, where, where did she come from? I watched her, and she just looked like a college administrator who didn't know very much. Where did they f- choose her? Where did they get her from? Well, that's basically where she, she's the daughter of a well-known Democrat um, big wheel that was in the House of Delegates named Pete Rawlings. And when she decided she went to law school and then she decided she wanted to get into politics, so of course he pulled strings. And then when Sheila Dixon, the one that got um, convicted of embezzling money in the city of Baltimore, they moved her in. And so that's why she's there. And she has destroyed this city. She has, she has. You know, a- I, no, I hear what you're saying. I, I got to say something that's a little on the racial element side. Baltimore was. Oh, 50 years ago, about 50% white, 50% black, right? Are you still there? Yeah, I'm still here. It was about 50-50 white and black. Today it's what, 60-30, 60-40? If it's that much, I think it's more like, it it could even be more like 65-25. All right. Now, there was a time that the Italians ran Baltimore, isn't that true? Yes, that was Nancy Pelosi's father was... uh, and wasn't the city wasn't the city at that time a little less violent? There were I don't know there were any riots in the city at that time, were there? No, you're you're absolutely right. It was more. So in other words, it may have had its its share of corruption, but the city was under control. It was a, it was much safer for for business people for the middle class. Isn't that correct? Absolutely. Well, I'm going to make a prediction right now. We see what happens when. Liberal Democrats, whatever the race may be, take control of a city, a state, or a federal government. And what happens after this mismanagement 
and this mayhem is that people start to scream for law and order. And law and order candidates come along and they're usually swept into office. That's been the history of America. And I predict that's what's going to happen, not only in Baltimore, but in America as well. The problem on a national level is not one Republican has stood up as a law and order candidate, by the way, to bring it up to a federal level. I do not know of one of them who has declared himself a law and order candidate. Do you? No, I do not. And you're absolutely right when you say that. And I know this from the inside, from, from cops that talked to me last night and this morning that they were told to stand down to those protesters, and they were told to sit there and take it as bricks and rocks were thrown at them. Well, who told them that? The mayor? The mayor's office came out there. I'm being told that the mayor's office very strictly said, you must stand down, and that was from her meetings over the... But why did she want her city to burn? Why did she want it to burn, baby, burn? What's in it for her? Because basically what's in it for her, Michael, is... What you saw last night was race riots because of this, this black white, the, the white, the black on white crime in Baltimore is never talked about, yet it is so prevalent. There are places in Baltimore, if you're a white person, you do not go. You go to a very limited area by the stadium. Right. Haven't your- there been many instances of the knockout games, so called, in Baltimore? I remember seeing it over the last few years. Yes, the not that game is very prevalent, and let me tell you, they never get convicted. This year, Michael, 38 bills went through the Democrat-controlled legislature that were focused on the rights of the criminal. In fact, we dubbed it the Year of the Criminal in Baltimore. We did this back in February, not knowing that these riots were going to come. But last year, the, the guards in the Baltimore City Jail were found to be members of the gangs there. And when, when you, and that was a big scandal in the jail. But when you found out yesterday that the Crips, the Bloods, and the Black Gorilla family had bounded together to target police, this Martha Washington, as you say, she didn't tell you the whole story. They were targeting white police officers. There was- yeah, I know. She left that out. She's very clever. She's as clever as Obama in her use of language, Martha Washington. Can you repeat your name and your position in, in, in the city uh, of Baltimore again? Uh, I work for a state delegate in the Maryland House of Delegates in the legislature. I want to say one quick thing. No, no, I want you to stay on because you've been quite illuminating for myself and I'm sure for my audience. Would you please stay on? It's like we found a great guest by accident because you're divulging things I didn't know about, about Baltimore and why the riots happened and confirming my suspicion that this riot did not occur in a vacuum. It was not only planned, it was promoted and it was aided and abetted by higher powers. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Now, the challenge for us as the federal government is, is that we don't run these police forces. I can't federalize every police force in the country and force them to retrain. So you can. You can send Al Sharpton to retrain. You can actually use the Crips and the Bloods to retrain the police. Uh, That would be like bringing in ISIS to retrain the U.S. military to not be so racist. That's what the liberals would like. Bring in ISIS members to America and have them teach at the VMI in West Point on how to be more friendly to uh, uh, Islamists and not be Islamophobic because Islamophobia is far worse than cutting off someone's head by Islamists. I mean, if you're a liberal, everything is upside down. So yeah, bring in the Crips and the Bloods and and have them teach the federal police, the police in every department, send them around the country on a big, big paycheck, teach them how to be kinder and gentler to the gangbangers and then legalize. See, if you legalize drugs, you'd put them out of business. So you can't do that. So you keep drugs illegal, and then you have the Crips and the Bloods teaching the police how to be kinder and gentler towards the drug dealers. Then you won't have as much crime, and cities won't burn. And then while you're at it, Mr. Obama, have ISIS retrain the military on how to be friendly toward the the Islamics. See, that makes sense if the world's upside down. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language. 
Adult content. Psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. The violence that happened yesterday distracted from the fact that you had seen multiple days of peaceful protests that were focused on entirely legitimate concerns of these communities in Baltimore led by clergy and community leaders and they were constructive and they were thoughtful and frankly didn't get that much attention and one burning building uh, will be looped on television over right, and over and over again. again you see he's speaking with forked tongue again there he goes what he's saying is it took a burning building to get your attention that's what he just said so don't assume that this happened in a vacuum evidence has come out from social media that outside agitators the same ones who brought us the fires in Ferguson and the riots are doing it again in Baltimore, and they're not finished yet. Welcome to the Savage Nation. There's an awful lot to talk about. I think in the last hour as it ended, we had a caller who works in the state government who broke some news here. I didn't read it anywhere. I didn't hear it anywhere. She said that she knows for a fact that the incompetent mayor that everyone was talking about gave a stand-down order to the Baltimore police that they're not to react at all. She said that. Did you hear that on the show? That was breaking news. I didn't see it on the wires, but we broke the news on the show. If it's true, and I think it must be true, because there's no other explanation to have allowed this to have occurred. She told them, stand down. She told them not to react. She told them not to use fire hoses. She told them not to use uh, rubber bullets. She told them not to use sticks. She told them to stand there like a bunch of dummies, and it's going to happen again tonight. The next thing about the mayor that puzzled even liberals last night was why did the moron mayor say the curfew begins tonight rather than last night? What was that about? How did that, how did that work out? How does that figure? How in the world did that figure? Who is she? Well, she's a patronage appointee, a political appointee. Her father is a powerful figure in the uh, uh, state government. And he made her mayor, that's all. Another one, another idiot who belongs running a girls' college somewhere in, Wa in Washington State. If there are any, I don't know if they're allowed to have girls' colleges in Washington State. Given that a men clause in Washington, it may be something different than that. Nevertheless, here we are, and I've talked an awful lot for two hours. I'd like to know what you have to say. I'm going to open the lines up at 855-407-282. But before I do, these guys worked so hard today to gather, gather sound. We played a lot of the mayor, I'm sorry, of the governor. I think we have to go back to the Baltimore mayor. The most important point was made Saturday night when she said that they have the right to destroy space in clip number 17. It's a very delicate balancing act because while we uh, try to make sure that they were protected from the cars and the other you know, things that were going on, um, we also gave those who wished to destroy space to do that as well. Okay. And we... Yeah, with those who wish to destroy space to do that as well. Oh, okay, so they destroyed. You gave them the space. You told the police not to act. Then she gets called on it, and she says the media misquoted her. Listen to 18 now. We balance a very fine line between giving protesters, um, giving protesters, peaceful protesters, space to protest. What I said is, in doing so, people can hijack that and use that space for bad. I did not say that we were accepting of it. Nonsense. I did not say okay, that we she's were. She's lying. She got caught lying. And what's new about that? Oh, a politician lies. She said we gave those who wish to destroy space to do that. That's all. It's as simple as that. And uh, the rest is history. She gave an invitation to destroy. And they did. Destroy they did. Alveda King is certainly a name that you should know. She is a direct descendant of Martin Luther King Jr. Listen to what she says in 19 and 20 on the Savage Nation. Tell me what you think. If you look at those children throwing the rocks and the anger, and then they're being stirred on properly by outside agitators. And so in the 1960s, 1963, the Children's March, we were calm, we were orderly, we were prayerful. And so we knew how to demonstrate peacefully. No one has instructed these young children. 
and then the mayor gets an invitation to destroy and uh, economically and morally that's disaster and I don't know if she if she's a head of a city she should be thinking and I don't believe she is well she's in uh, very good company with the president what's he thinking about where was he last night everyone's asking where is he why doesn't he give a speech and I bring it back home here again I will say to you with a lawless president what did you expect to happen in Baltimore with a lawless attorney general, a lawless Democrat party in general, a party that makes up laws and disregards others, what did you expect to happen? Without law, there can be no order. You ask, why didn't the police act? We learned today in the Savage Nation, because the mayor told them to do nothing. Also, the police were threatened by the FBI. We heard all day long, oh, the FBI is monitoring the situation. What do you mean monitoring the situation? To make sure the police didn't do their job. That's what the FBI is for. They're fundamentally a police force controlled by Obama. That's strictly what the FBI has become. A group of thugs who intimidate local police forces and prevent them from doing their job. So you can say there's a lot of blame going right to the top, that's all. And in today's speech, uh, finally when it came from Obama, he was very fair in his comments. Uh, he blamed both police and rioters. But notice that the great president failed to take any responsibility for all he has done to demonize the police over the long years of his reign, right? We have the sound of all of that. And why have the ringleaders of these riots not been named or arrested when their names are all over the Internet? Can anyone explain that? Uh, will Obama call them undocumented shoppers, those who were arrested, and then grant them amnesty? They arrested several hundred of the undocumented uh, shoppers. And I suppose that Obama can grant them a pardon or amnesty uh, as soon as possible. If you care to sound off on the problems that you see going on in Baltimore and uh, in the country in general related to Baltimore, because this did not occur out of a vacuum, there's no question about it, there's going to be billions of dollars stolen as a result of this. All of the sharks are lining up. Former Maryland Congressman Kwesi Mfumi says we need a Marshall Plan for Baltimore. What does that mean? It means you have to pay out of your pocket. Al Sharpton, the con man, the outside agitator, the all-around bad guy, says poverty is the basis of what this set this off. Listen to Al Sharpton in clip 22. There are issues that have been going back for years, and there are underlying issues like poverty, like unemployment, yeah, 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 that, that really uh, yeah, 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 is the basis of any yeah, yeah. spark could have set this off. Oh, shut Having up. Said I've heard this crap my whole life. I was growing up in poverty. I didn't go burn a building down. I didn't beat up old women and hit them over the head and steal a purse. I was also unemployed. I didn't kill anybody. Don't give me that garbage. I killed myself to get a job, Al. I don't see you suffering any. Yeah, unemployment. You're not unemployed because you're such a dangerous character. Uh, they hire you at NBC to keep, keep you off the streets. Unbelievable what a country we live in. What a country we live in that they let this outside agitator, a lifetime of outside agitating to go to Baltimore to try and what? What's he going to try and do? Stick his fingers in it? The only one missing from the puzzle is Bill Clinton. How come he hasn't gone there to see if he can get a little donation to the Clinton Foundation? in exchange for something. Where's Hillary, by the way, in all of this, the woman who would be president? How come she hasn't said a word about the riots and what she would have done? Would she have done anything differently or told the police to stand down? Where is Hillary Clinton, the woman who would be president? We know where Bill is. He's on the way to Africa. The book that exposes the grift and the greed is coming out uh, next week. He's on the way to Africa to save the poor Africans from themselves. You didn't know that? Bill Clinton heads to Africa as foundation scrutinized. Washington, with his charity foundation on the fire, Bill Clinton is headed to Africa to tout his organization's good works and conveniently put himself several thousand miles away uh, from those probing his unorthodox financial activities. Clinton heads to Tanzania on Wednesday and Thursday, where he'll highlight Clinton Foundation projects that are meant to, group, to boost crop yields, dispense vaccines, and otherwise improve quality of life for the country's poor. Well, as I said about the missionaries who came to Hawaii many years ago, uh, they came to do good and they did very well indeed. No question about it. Some things never change. Let's go to the callers on the Savage Nation, WABC Line 5. Fire away, you're on the air with Michael Savage and millions of others. What's on your mind? 
most of Obama's policies exasperate the problem, like you were saying, they take fathers out of the homes. I attended one of uh, President Obama's My Brother's Keepers um, events, and I was appalled because the speaker said to the kids, 90% of you come from broken homes, you live with your grandmother, your aunt, but he didn't follow by saying, it's up to you to break that cycle. And I want to add to Indian Americans, dark-skinned Asians, they're banned from My Brother's Keeper. Michelle Obama, inner city, Newark, black girls rock. He should have said, because you rock, have your baby after you're out of college, when you're older, when you're married. So they always sidestep 73% out of wedlock in the black community, much higher in the inner city. They don't want to talk about that. They actually make things worse with their policies. They create government dependency. You said it all, my friend. There's no point in commenting on your comments. They were a very clear set of comments. Let's go to the next caller on the Savage Nation. WJR in Detroit, Michigan, you're welcome to the Savage Nation. What's on your mind, my friend? Anna, um, I admire you, Dr. Savage, for your bravery and uh, fearlessness being um, really an uh, inspiration to me. Um, here in the uh, Detroit area, we had uh, this year a couple of uh, uh, instances where uh, uh, police officers uh, were involved in um, beating up pretty severely some black, a couple of black men, and one a police officer uh, is charged, the other one is being, um, uh, this, the charges were dismissed. But because we elected a uh, white mayor, someone that is not corrupted, uh, it makes a huge difference. Uh, they were trying to start the riots here in Detroit, but it didn't work. Uh, he's a uh, very good mayor. He's keeping in touch with the city council, with the prosecutor. Well, in Detroit, there was a great, st- you know, I, one of my favorite shows on TV is American Greed on CNBC. They did a whole thing on the corrupt mayor of uh, Detroit. He, he robbed the city blind. He robbed the city blind. He feathered his own nest, his family. Does that sound familiar to you? Does it sound like the Clintons? Yes, exactly. Now, now the new mayor is different. He's not corrupted. So they were trying to start the riot, and he, but it didn't work because he wouldn't fall for it. I Listen, stay on the line. I'm sending you a free copy of my new novel coming out next week. Can you believe it or not? Countdown to Mecca. It'll be on the way to you uh, just about overnight. That opens up one line at... 855 The minute I come back, I want to go to the callers because many of you are dying to give us your two cents on what's going on in Baltimore and what you would do to make it, to make it certain it doesn't happen in your city. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. The only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. My thoughts are with the police officers who were injured in last night's disturbances. Uh, It underscores that that's a tough job, uh, and we have to keep that in mind. Uh, And my hope is that that they can uh, heal and get back to work uh, as soon as possible. Oh, come on. Look, most of it's just political, you know, window dressing. We understand that. He doesn't know what he, he didn't know what to say. Okay, so he blamed everybody but himself. That's after six years of attacking the police in America. Uh, all of a sudden, he doesn't know why there are riots against the police. They've neutralized the police. They're afraid to do anything right now, and this is going to get worse, not better. Now, a uh, caller on my show in the last hour said she worked for a state legislator in Maryland, and she said clearly that the cops were told directly from the mayor's office to stand down. That is breaking news. WBAP in Dallas, line two. Make your point, please. You're on the Savage Nation. Yes, hi, Mike. Uh, To piggyback on what that lady was uh, talking about, the uh, situation between uh, Stephanie Rowling Blake and the former governor um, of uh, mayor and governor, he also was endorsed by her father, when he, the first time he became mayor, uh, he absolutely cherry picked her to replace Sheila Dixon. Also, this has absolutely nothing to do with Freddie Gray. This has everything to do. Baltimore is a horribly economically depressed city. 
the unemployment rate amongst black youth is above 70 percent. Also, if I were the governor of the state of Maryland, I would demand the resignation of the mayor. She has absolutely no control of the situation. Well, let's talk about unemployment. What are they? Tell me what they're capable of doing. What kind of work are they capable of doing? Uh, the majority of them, uh, from what I understand, they uh, usually look for uh, restaurant jobs, uh, working uh, in places like the, the places that they burned down, like CVSs, Walgreens. You know, right. but, you know, so, they burn, so they burnt down the one place that was put in their community to help them uh, get a job. Is that it? That made sense. Yeah, yeah. And um, so uh, well, I. What's the mayor giving a conference for, like she's a movie star with the, with the baseball hat? Give me a conference now, like she just has a, had a victory. She's ready to go on Oprah all of a sudden. They gave her a baseball hat, and she's congratulating herself and everyone else for what? That only half the city burnt down? I never saw any stupidity like this. She looks like a, a first-class dumbbell. Yeah, well, again, uh, if I were the governor, the best way to handle the situation is demand for her resignation. She is part of the Of problem. course there should be a demand for resignation for telling people have the right to, uh, to break things. Everybody knows that she gave them a little uh, leeway there. Now she's trying to say she did a great job. Only 50% of the city burnt down. But it's early yet. <clears throat> it's early. Tonight's another night, you know? Okay, La look. I've seen this my whole life. I've heard the justification for this kind of garbage my whole life. I'm sick of it. I'm sick of listening to this crap that they need jobs. Because if you gave most of those rioters jobs, A, they wouldn't take them, number one. And two, if they did take them, Tell me what kind of employee they would be. If you own a business, you know exactly what kind of employee they would be. They have no skills whatsoever. They have no English skills. They have no discipline. They're surly. They would not listen to you telling them what to do. If you tell them what to do, they'll have to punch you in the, in the mouth. So tell me what they're capable of doing in our society. What are they capable of doing, Mr. Obama? That's the real issue. Employment, I love the jobs. Same crap we heard about ISIS. Remember? <clears throat> she said they needed the jobs in the Middle East to stop killing people and cutting their throats. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. And as a society saying, what can we do to change those communities, to help lift up those communities and, and oh, give those shut. kids I opportunity? I can't take this anymore. It's not my job to lift up the community. Let them lift themselves up like I did. Lift up the community. I'm going to go work like a social worker. I did. I was a social worker for many years. I didn't lift anyone up. They robbed the system blind. I was a social worker in the early days. I was an idealist. I saw how they, they ripped the system off. They lived better than I did as a college graduate. Go lift up the communities. I'm rubbish. I've heard this garbage my whole life. I'm just sick of it, don't you understand? And, and, and let me tell you what's going to happen tonight, and I pray I'm wrong. You got state police there. Chris Christie sent a number of New Jersey state troopers. At least that's a positive act. You got National Guard. They're armed. I will tell you what's liable to happen. The white communist outside agitators who are there in the crowd are praying to God they can provoke someone into getting shot. They want another incident. They want... An incident. They're going to try to provoke not the police, but the National Guard or the state police into some sort of reaction so they can claim martyrdom again. Listen, all you got to do is read Orwell's Animal Farm to know what's going on, and you'll see how this works. And you'll understand this country is being run by a bunch of race baiters, a bunch of outside agitators who got very lucky and very far, and that Obama's really Al Sharpton with a smoother act. It's that simple. KSFO Radio, San Francisco. Go ahead. You're on the Savage Nation. Hey, Doc. Um, I just wanted to say, like, I'm a young black man watching what's going on in Baltimore. It, it upsets me for a number of reasons, but uh, I guess if you want to call them protesters, like, they're all hypocrites. Uh, we get upset because a black man dies at the hands of police, which I'm not saying there's not a problem, because there is, but we kill each other every day. By the, I mean, it makes no sense. We don't protest. We don't say anything about that. But we're getting upset because a few. That's a good point. No, I didn't even think of that point. You mean you mean black on black crime? Absolutely, black on black crime. I mean, I, I just me myself personally. I personally know people that have been killed, have have been victims of black on black crime, 
I'm talking about just we shoot each other in the head, Doc. I, I mean, it, it's going on. It, it happens in our streets, in inner cities, all across America every day. And we're not, we as a people, black people, we're not saying anything about that. I mean, other than lip service. Other than that, it happens every day. There's right. And we don't really know what happened to this guy, Gray. We don't know whether his spine really was severed. We don't know what really happened. We hear he was an innocent man. I don't know if that's true. We don't know what went on in that van. We don't know what he did before it. I don't know. But that's irrelevant. You're saying they're using it as a pretext to burn the city down. Absolutely. And and it's just messed up because you take cases like Eric Garner and I think it was Timmy on Rice. They lose credibility when we when we have um, Michael Browns and all the evidence is saying that Noah's hands weren't up. If, and, and then we got athletes and, and... Right. Do you remember wh how, what position I took on the Eric Garner case, the Staten Island case? Do you, did you hear that show? No, you said that that man was murdered. And then you also said that Mike Brown, when it came down to it, uh, all of the witnesses, and, and witnesses aside, the physical evidence suggested that he attacked the officer. Right. Like, In other words, I didn't make it a racial case. One was a thug who tried to disarm the cop after beating up an Indian shopkeeper. And he got into a scuffle and he got killed. The other one was choked to death by a bunch of rogue cops. That was my position. So it wasn't a, a carte blanche, white, black thing for me. And I'm glad that you listen to the show and don't typecast me the way most of San Francisco does. I've listened to you for years, Doc. I, I'm, I'm glad I found you again on KSFO. And like I said, man, it just it, it, it saddens me beyond belief. Like I said, no, I and, you know, I wonder what the climate is like today to be a, a, a black man young who's doing it the right way has has the country changed under obama for you <sighs> see that that that's a tough one because not i i wouldn't say in a way that has benefited me doing things the right way no no I'm i don't mean i didn't say benefited you i'm talking about let's put it in a more fundamental way do you feel that uh, white people look at you differently since obama became president You know, that, that, that's a great question. No, I, I hadn't even really considered that. <laughs> I'm sorry. I I'm sorry to be so, like so socially nosy, pardon me. <laughs> I, yeah, let me ask you something. Did, did I once run into you and another friend of yours in a bar over there in the, in the, in the, in the triangle area of uh, San Francisco, one of the bars in the Royal Exchange or one of those places about five years ago? No, I, I really, it would, I would. I remember it once would, I, I was in one of those bars. I don't even go there anymore, frankly. And uh, there were two young African American guys in their 30s, well dressed. Obviously, they were business guys. And they were big fans of the show. And I just thought you might be one of those guys because you sound like one of them in the sense that you're very balanced and you're very, you're very clear on the whole scene. I mean, you're not automatically taking the side of the rioters because you yourself are black. It's that simple. It's a, it is that simple, Doc, and honestly, I, I, I can't express to you how sad it is that, like I said, we don't take a step back and really analyze situations fully before we start making opinions and, and putting them out there, because, like I said, the, the real issue ends up getting avoided completely because now all, we're, you're burning the city down. I mean, that yeah, and I wanted to know all night long as I sat eating veal cacciatore, eating far too much, too salty, too fatty. I could not stop watching the news last night after the show. And I saw it getting worse and worse and worse. And I saw the, the flames rising. I saw the police were neutralized. And I said, when the hell are the police going to step in and use water hoses, use rubber bullets to stop them? And they didn't. They did nothing. And I learned today it was because that doofus mayor... <clears throat> told him to stand down in advance. That's what I saw, and I'm afraid something worse is going to happen tonight, my friend. You're absolutely right, Doc, for the simple fact. It, it's always overreactions. We tell them, that the police are told not to do anything, and then a situation, that you, they don't do anything in a situation that warrants it, and then one that may not necessarily warrant so much force, they end, up, they end up going overboard because they've been handcuffed. I mean, and I'm sorry, if it was me and I put that uniform on every day, white, black, or whatever it is, I'm going home to my family at the end of the day. And those men know every day that they could be shot on a routine traffic stop simply because somebody doesn't want to go back to jail. I don't care what color you are. 
if it was me and I was that cop, there's going to be situations where, yeah, I'm going to be a little quick on the trigger. And it doesn't help when we, as a people, as black people, we treat each other like dogs. How are we supposed to expect the people that uh, police society not to, uh, at least some of them, have that view of us? And it's not all of them. Well, you, you said it very succinctly. I'm sure it's not a popular opinion. And it's very difficult for it to come out of your 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 <laughs> come out of you. I heard it wasn't easy to even say what you said. But I had a caller in the last hour who was a community ag- organizer in Baltimore, almost said agitator, who was offended when I said I called the rioters animals. He said they're not animals. I said what are they? He said they're misdirected. I said nonsense. That's like saying ISIS is misdirected uh, Muslims. They're not misdirected at all. They're behaving like animals. What would you call someone who burns a building to the ground, burns a senior citizen center to the ground, uh, breaks into a building on under the guise of protesting and robs things? What would you call them? I'm for calling spades spades. The only reason why I don't like the word animals is because it's a little offensive to animals because they don't even burn their own stuff down. <laughs> Stop. All right. Well, my friend, this is not an easy situation for any of us. My fear is that tonight the outside agitators, the white communists from Chicago uh, uh, who are coming in from New York, are going to try to provoke the National Guard into reaction. And one of the reactions is liable to be a gunshot or a baton, and they're going to have exactly what they want, which is another martyr. That's what they're seeking. I've read Animal Farm. I'm watching Animal Farm being acted out. And it's all a result of the power vacuum at the top. Please stay on the line so that we can get your address and send you a free copy of my new novel, which is coming out next week, called Countdown to Mecca, because that book is about something larger than Baltimore. Baltimore is a terrible situation. But what would happen, ask yourself what would happen, if one of the sleepers in America, one of the Muslim sleepers in America, according to the FBI, they're in 49 of the 50 states, suddenly acts out and ignites a device or a bioterrorism agent that not only sets a city on fire but kills most of the occupants. I fictionalized it in Countdown to Mecca. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-Y-C-O-I-N. Breaking news in the Savage Nation. As I predicted in the last hour, I predicted more violence in Baltimore. Well, an exclusive report just released to Fox News from a data mining firm. They're reporting a spike in message traffic in Washington, D.C., Philadelphia, and New York City with outside agitators trying to get rides to Baltimore for tonight. Let me repeat that. Outside agitators are crossing state lines from Washington, D.C., Philadelphia, New York City, and other points trying to get rides into Baltimore to stir up trouble. They are violating federal law. They are violating the Federal Anti-Riot Act. And if the president was not a liar, he would have them arrested before they crossed into Baltimore because they're coming into Baltimore simply to agitate the youth into more burning and looting. And remember what I just said to you, if the president was not a liar, if the president really wanted to stop what is going on in Baltimore, he could authorize the arrest and detainment immediately of these outside agitators. Where the heck is the Department of Homeland Security when we need them? What are they doing with the trillions of dollars that they've garnered for themselves? Where are the cars, the armored cars? Where are these trained men of the DHS Why are they not stopping these outside terrorists? You can call them protesters if you want. I call them terrorists because that's what they are. They're domestic terrorists. I don't care if they're your daughter with a knapsack from NYU. She's a terrorist. She's an outside agitator. And if she's going to Baltimore, she's crossing state lines. And if she's doing so, she's violating federal law. Time for one quick call here on the Savage Nation. Line 5 WMAL in Washington, D.C., Go ahead, please. You're on the air with Michael Savage and millions of others. What's on your mind? Yes, Michael. I'm right here in Baltimore and the Jewish community. 
And I must tell you that there's fear that's going through the community. And as much as this morning there were mothers afraid to take their children to the Jewish schools, they asked that there be auxiliary police patrols so that they could go in there. We're told now that we shouldn't even go to the synagogues after 940 this evening. They've already been up here in northwest Baltimore, and they've broken windows. They've done looting in a shopping center here, and so people are afraid. Well, you, you're saying that they've come out of Baltimore and gone into the suburbs, the rioters? No. It's Baltimore City. The biggest part of the Jewish community is in Baltimore City. And there's a fellow by the name of Malik Shabazz, who is a big racist, white, uh, anti-white... Oh, he's a Jew hater, right? He's the head of the new Black Panther Party. He's a, he spews racial hatred uh, unlike any I've ever seen in modern American history. And, he's and what, he, he brought his goon squad up to your community yesterday, Malik Shabazz? I don't know if he's come up here yet, but they say that they've been here already, and they're, they're planning on coming up again. My point is this, when you say that... So police, why don't you ask the mayor of Baltimore to provide you with police protection? Exactly what I'm getting to. When you say the police were told to stand down, the mayor of Baltimore said it, it's to teach us, the Jewish people, that we know that there's no one we can rely on, there's no uh, rescuing except if it comes from heaven, that God is doing everything here to bring us together together, to know that yeah, well, right now, let me tell you something. You better learn from the Israelis, which is to have an Uzi in one hand and, 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 a, and a Bible in the other. No one could save us, even with those things. Well, God didn't That's save the Jews when he was throwing the children in, or the Germans were throwing the children into the ovens. Okay. We don't it know why. Amer- it was the American troops and the Russian troops who saved the, the few remaining Jews. It wasn't God. Nope. I, I don't want to hear any more about God saving. He didn't save six million. You know, I mean, it's enough already with God's going to save you. He didn't save him so fast. Anyway, I wish you luck tonight. I can't help you with it. As uh, someone wrote a number of years ago, every Jew at 22, that might be an answer. I don't know who it was. It was an interesting uh, use of uh, a phrase. You can't sit and wait for others to protect you. You have to learn to protect yourself. Do what the Chinese monks learned to do thousands of years ago when, when criminal bands were marauding the countryside and beating up monks and stealing their... Possessions, that's how martial arts uh, began. Did you know that? The peaceful Buddhist monks learned how to use hoes and rakes in martial arts to defend themselves from the marauding uh, bands of robbers. And that was the beginning of one school of martial arts. It's an absolute fact of reality. I've long tried to tell the American Jewish community to stop being so passive, but they don't listen. They don't listen, they don't want to learn, they want to live in a dream world in a bubble, and they say it can't happen here while it is happening here. Nevertheless, it's not about that, it's about Baltimore right now. And as I reported, an anonymous data mining firm just reported to Fox News that they've detected a spike that is an increase in messaging going back and forth from New York City, Philadelphia, and Washington with rioters trying to get rides to Baltimore for tonight. And so as the curtain falls on the day, Expect to see provocations of the National Guard. As I said to you earlier, they want nothing more than a new martyr or martyrs. They're going to try to provoke the National Guard into reactions or the state police so they can then claim that the police are all violent and all racist and they need to be controlled by Barack Hussein Obama and Al Sharpton, who are one and the same as far as I'm concerned. They're both faces of the same exact mindset. It doesn't matter whether they're different and from different mothers. They are one and the same. It's just that Obama, in Obama, they finally found a street agitator who was smooth enough to become president. His policies are no different than that of the Freddy's Fashion Mart maven, Al Sharpton. Outside agitators arriving on the scene, violating federal anti-riot laws. If we had a legitimate federal government, the outside agitators from NYU, Columbia, and other denizens of America hatred would be arrested on site by the Department of Homeland Security. This is Michael Savage saying, keep your eyes open and your heart wide.